For those of you that don't know, there's something called the functional movement in exercise. The functional movement is a movement that is spearheaded by people who believe genuinely that certain kinds of exercises that mimic more natural kinds of movements like walking, standing, sitting, uh, lunging, running, jumping, all these sorts of things are fundamentally better in and of themselves than other alternatives, more traditional alternatives, like using external loads like barbells and dumbbells and machines and cables and those sorts of things. So obviously this is completely unsubstantiated and anyone who's ever been training for any length of time knows this intuitively, but today we're going to kind of go through some debunking for those of you maybe that are sort of on the border or the fence between thinking that the functional movement is something to actually consider and take seriously. First things first, we need to define what functional even means. A lot of people throw this word around sort of haphazardly and very broadly and sort of in a cliched smoke bomb, smoke grenade type of way on social media. So first things first, functional and just the word function, right? Uh, if, if something is functional, if an exercise is functional, it means that it's serving a particular goal and it's accomplishing a particular goal. So hopefully when you start to exercise or you're giving an exercise to a client, you have a goal that you're trying to accomplish with that exercise. If you don't have a goal, then you need a goal and you need to make a decision about what you want to do. My goal is to train biceps, but I don't clearly elucidate that. I could do a leg extension and that would serve you know, some purpose that's completely unrelated to what I actually want to do. That may seem really blatantly obvious to some of you, but a lot of these kinds of things and a lot of these kinds of uh, trains of thought get, get missed in terms of the actual explication of the, the lines of thought, specifically because they're so obvious. So again, functional means something works, and hopefully all exercise is functional for the specific goal that we're trying to accomplish. So a dumbbell curl is very functional for the goal of trying to grow the biceps. A shoulder press is very functional for the goal of trying to develop the deltoids question here and the distinction here now that we've sort of cleared that nuance up is simply that do these functional exercises are these functional exercises like you know the crazy balancing on one leg the exercises that mimic walking the sort of jumping activities that a lot of people do with gen pop clients that have no business doing them do we really need the exercises that we're doing to actually look like these other activities to improve these other activities now i obviously don't think this and the reason that i don't think this i'll get to uh, there are there are many of them but uh, I think this really comes down to a fundamental misunderstanding of how we acquire skills and how we further develop skills. The first things first, a muscle is a muscle is a muscle. A muscle does one thing and it contracts. It can lengthen and it can shorten, but in either case, it's still contracting to control motion. Muscles only pull together through origin and insertion, meaning that if there's point A and there's point B, those two points get pulled together regardless of what muscle we're talking about or what particular joint action we're creating by contraction of that muscle. Whether you're sitting down to take a shit on the toilet or whether you're doing a leg extension, in both cases, your quads are just contracting. Now, the difference, of course, between bending down to take a shit and doing a leg extension is obviously outside of the obvious things like the amount of load that you're using and the specific fact that you know your feet are planted in one instance and your uh, uh, feet are not planted in another is the actual skill of the movement otherwise referred to as a motor pattern. Now, a motor pattern, to be clear, is basically just a fancy way to say a skill, and a motor pattern specifically refers to how the brain organizes around that particular skill. If you want to think about it this way, the brain is sort of the software and the programming, and the muscles are the hardware. The muscles are simply just responding on account of what the brain decides is the most efficient solution to the problem. And the problem, in the case of exercise, isn't necessarily a problem in the traditional sense, right? It's just a specific force that we have to resist, in a specific direction at a specific amount of uh, force production in tandem with other muscles that also surround that same joint. So in short, a motor program, motor pattern, a skill, whatever you wanna call it, is essentially just a coordination of contraction to accomplish a specific motion or to accomplish a, a specific direction of intent of motion. Right? So you could be doing a plank, for example, and there's obviously a lot of force that you're resisting in a plank, but you don't necessarily have to be moving. You're still contracting even though you're not moving in that case. But the functional people say, no, no, no. Regardless of how different things look, even though contraction is contraction is contraction and muscles are muscles are muscles, it still doesn't make sense that, let's say, a pec fly could possibly improve a bench press. So again, by this sort of functional training line of thinking, uh, pec flies could never possibly improve a bench press. Uh, leg extensions could never possibly improve squats. Hip thrusts could never possibly improve squats. But if you have any experience whatsoever in the gym, whether it's training yourself or clients, 
you obviously know that this is a crock of bullshit. So just to use a specific example, let's use the one around leg extensions and squats, since that one seems to be uh, a popular topic amongst uh, all different kinds of camps. Although the force circumstances and the length of certain two joint muscles like the rectus femoris are different in terms of their position and their orientation and the amount that they'll contribute to the squat versus the leg extension, fundamentally in both instances, much like in the poo versus the um, uh, leg extension example, the quads are just contracting, right? They're just trying to pull the knee into extension and they're trying to pull the hip into flexion, at least the one that also crosses the uh, hip. So in either case, the quad is still shortening and the quad is still lengthening. And ultimately what the functional movement gets so wrong about this example in particular is simply the fact that muscle is a muscle and that a muscle really just creates muscular torque around the joints that it crosses. And that as a consequence, doing a leg extension and improving the strength of your quads in a leg extension can very easily translate to something like a squat. The only difference between the leg extension and the squat is the motor pattern, the way that your brain is essentially organizing around the actual load and around the actual uh, challenges of the specific motion. So although there are a lot more moving parts and pieces in something like a free weight squat, Ultimately, the quad is doing the same thing in either case. It's really just a matter of do you have the skill in the squat or the improved strength gains and size gains in the quad to manifest. So again, let's just imagine that you took six months off of squatting and the only thing that you did for quads was leg extensions. If you grew your quads by, let's say, you know, five to 10%, which would be, you know, however you would measure that is not really the relevant piece. But if you grew your quad significantly and you actually improve the strength that you had in terms of the output on the leg extension by let's say 20 to 30 to 40 percent it's very very difficult for me to believe that you know if not initially after a week or two weeks or just a couple of exposures of the squat your squat would already be much improved now of course there are other factors involved like strength of the hips strength of the spine etc but you get the point no one is really just eliminating squats altogether if they're something that they're trying to actually get better at doing the leg extensions thus in tandem with the squats especially if you're a more hip dominant squatter and your quads don't get much stimulus during the squats is a really really good idea and can actually lead to a multiplication of gains rather than just an addition of gains so again just to reiterate if i only do the leg extensions in hope that my squat will improve especially if you're a stronger athlete this probably won't make very much of a difference now if you're a beginner it'll probably translate a lot but not for very long now again doing the leg extension and doing the squat are two very separate very distinct things but no one is really just doing one or the other in isolation. You're almost always doing both of those kinds of things. Now, if we step back away from this very specific lifting example and we look at daily living activities, we are constantly doing daily living activities. We're constantly sitting down, we are constantly standing up, we are constantly walking from place to place, hopefully, and we are constantly you know, doing things like grabbing glasses from the cupboards, grabbing laundry from you know, the laundry basket, putting it into the dryer, taking it out of the dryer, right? We are constantly honing in these skills whether we think about it or not and if you are training these muscles specific to the paths of motion of those muscles and in ways that are most efficient for training those tissues then the strength and the hypertrophy that you develop in the gym will immediately and consistently be transferred to all of the activities of daily living that you're already doing so if you improve the contractile ability of the quads and the glutes and the adductors and the hamstrings and the calves through doing something like a leg press which again to the functional crowd would be like a sin to perform and in in tandem with that you're also performing all of these other normal daily very low skill tasks like sitting down and standing up and grabbing a glass from the from the cupboard and all those types of things then you are constantly improving the skills of those things and transferring the contraction improvement from all of the uh, uh, exercises that you're doing with more external stability in the gym and you are allowing your brain to organize those improved contractile abilities to tasks of daily living i totally understand why this is not super intuitive to be honest i think that this comes from a lot of sort of poisoning emotional conditioning for very very long uh you know years in people's lives before they even lead up to lifting weights it's like just something that is more more natural to assume but again just remind yourself that this is a completely baseless idea it falls under the naturalistic fallacy which is essentially the fallacy that says that just because something is more natural or looks natural or feels natural that means it's better for us it's not true so again we are constantly sitting down standing up walking places moving our arms around to grab things overhead to do daily tasks and improving the contractile ability inside of the gym with 
isolated exercises like leg presses, hack squats, pendulum squats, leg curls, and all the equivalents for the upper body, right? All of those things are going to transfer to your daily living. It's not like all of a sudden your brain is going to forget how to contract a muscle because it's a different task, right? That's how all skills work. It's not just tasks of daily living. That's how all skills in sports work and anything else. So I lastly just want you all to think of this in an analogy, maybe to gain a better understanding if you're having trouble sort of grasping this concept. Imagine that you're playing a video game. I personally for a long time have played the game World of Warcraft, which is essentially an MMORPG, which for you non-nerds out there is basically a game where you're like controlling a character and you get gear and uh, with more gear, you get more stats, you raise your strength and all these other stats that like can basically help you kill other people in the game. Uh, and, and as a consequence, you, you know, are more powerful, right? Uh, so you have this one thing that you can do, which is you can get more gear in the game, but you have another thing that you can do, which is you can improve the skills and the intuitive uh, uh, sorts of processes around the game, meaning like you can predict other people's moves, you can respond more quickly, you can get, you know, quicker at using your key binds and your mouse strokes, and you can optimize your, you know, your setup and your keyboard and whatever, all those other nerd things, right? Um, you can improve the software of, of how you play and interact with that video game but you can also improve the hardware and the equipment right so improving the hardware is getting the better gear it's raising your baseline stats it's increasing your health it's increasing your horsepower and improving the software is essentially improving the way that you interact with the game improving how fast your fingers move how quick you are to react to certain things in the game, how quick you are to actually use certain keybinds and you know put your fingers in weird positions to use certain keybinds. Improving one of these is fine, but improving both of these certainly has a much more than additive effect in terms of your level of skill and your output in the game. So much like improving at any video game and getting more gear in the game and getting better equipment versus improving the skill of the game, you can either improve the skill, i.e. you can you know sit down on a toilet to take a dump or you can go for a walk or you can do jumps you know in your apartment, um, or or you can actually just improve the contraction of the tissues specific to those tissues in a more isolated way in the gym. If you do both of those, which guess what? If you're resistant training, you're already doing that, uh, then both will improve. So again, we need to sort of get rid of this whole framework of a muscle is not a muscle. A muscle is only, you know, performing its function in this position or that position. Your muscles in your brain don't care exactly what you're doing. They just are trying to deal with the force scenario and the physics of the scenario at hand. So whether you're doing a lateral raise with the dumbbell or you're raising your arm up to go grab a glass out of the cupboard, in either case, your delt is contracting the same way. The only difference is obviously the force, the direction of the force, and the way that your brain has to coordinate all of the co-contractions around that to actually create an output, which is a skill. So again, improve the hardware, improve the equipment in the video game sort of analogy, improve the software, improve the actual skill at the game, and you have a lovely sort of uh, more complete picture of both worlds when you can improve both the hardware, i.e. the muscle contraction, and the hardware, which is the skill, which guess what? You're probably already doing uh, day to day, every day subconsciously. And you need to just remind yourself that these skills are not very high threshold uh, intense skills right walking to to the to the bathroom to take a dump which I've, I've probably given that example way too many times at this point right you get my point hopefully I've regurgitated that enough and I've elucidated that enough now if you are generally interested in this topic and you want to learn more about it I have a full biomechanics course that breaks down all the things that you need to know about muscle contraction and how muscle contraction responds to force and all those kinds of things but if you don't really care and you're just sort of interested and you're using this as ammo to argue with your friends that's perfectly fine by me I'll see you all next week.